Spectral Classification When you take the spectrum of a star, you do not get a continuous rainbow, but instead you get an absorption spectrum, which is what we're seeing here. So all these dark lines that you see in these images are absorption lines, and you can see that you get different absorption lines depending upon the star. And at the top here you can see labels that's hydrogen here, that one's hydrogen, got helium lines, some iron in there, some uh, magnesium and so on, but it's mostly hydrogen and helium. There's more helium, more helium, more hydrogen, all of those are hydrogen. Um, but clearly you're not getting the same intensity of line at in different stars. So here we've got one that's got very strong hydrogen alpha line. This one you don't even see it. And then you've also got uh, compounds like titanium oxide and so on that show up in some of these other stars. It turns out that we can use these lines to classify the stars. And the first person to do this was a man named William Pickering, and he did it based solely on how many lines. But one of the women who worked for him, Annie Cannon, uh, changed that. Uh, this was in the early 1900s. And this was at uh, the Harvard Observatory. And William Pickering was the uh, director of the observatory. And this was around the time that photography got sensitive enough that we could actually photograph the spectrum of stars. And so they had tons and tons of photographs but nobody really wanted to sit down and work with them. And so Pickering hired women, and that's what this photo is showing. They were called Pickering's women for two reasons. One, uh, most men didn't want to deal with the job because they thought it was tedious. And two, women were a lot cheaper. They could hire women and pay them much, much lower wages. But out of that group of women came some of America's first professional female astronomers. And Annie Cannon was one of those women. She looked at uh, the lines that were in those spectra and realized that the temperature of the star determined which lines we could see. Now Pickering's original system he just had it alphabetically, you know, A, B, C, and so on, based purely on number of lines. What Annie Cannon did was eliminated some of those categories, lumped some together, and rearranged it by temperature. And so the system we now have is much uh, more simplified compared to what Pickering had, going from O stars, which Annie Cannon discovered were the hottest, all the way down to M stars, which are the coolest. And that's what this picture is showing as well. We're going from O to M, from hottest to coolest. And you can see there's a definite trend based upon the temperature of what lines appear. Our sun is a G star. So we are on the cool end of the spectrum. We're actually a G5. Uh, each of these are subdivided into smaller groups by number. Uh, but for this class, for our purposes, we're only worrying about the main categories of OBA, FG, KM. There are a variety of mnemonics for remembering this. The classic mnemonic uh, was developed by Pickering himself 
and it was O be a fine girl kiss me now we can modify that to also include guy depending on your preference um, and you are free to make your own up um, I had a student come up with oh boy a fat goat kissed me so uh, have fun with that but regardless of what you use to remember the order uh, it is key to know the order of these letters and to know that you're going from hottest to coolest as you go from an O star to an M star.